Hello and welcome to my double O gauge box file layout, Karen Leshk. Uh, you can see it's very much a work in progress. This video is going to be how what we've achieved so far, what the plan is, uh, what I've learnt. Uh, so if you're thinking of building a box file layout, uh, maybe learn from some of my mistakes and things that I've done. And then after that, we will have a little running session. So if you want to just skip straight to the running session, I will leave a time code in the description below so you can forget all the, uh, the blah and the waffle and just see some trains running. So I was inspired to make this layout by a chap called Paul who goes under the name of Booking Hall on RM Web and his excellent box file layout, Briarley Canal Road. And I thought, yep, yeah, I want to do that. So I got some box files. And these box files are from Amazon. And when you buy your box files, you need to make sure that the ends, you see there's three box files here, but you need to make sure these ends are wood, basically. There are some that have uh, plastic ends, they're no good for this. So uh, you need to make sure you get the kind where you can cut the ends and bridge them through. And then what you can see is I've joined two box files together here so that we don't have to connect the track because we've got some complicated point work there. And then this is the fiddle yard. So we've got two, two boxes are the scenic section and one box is the fiddle yard at the moment. This is going to change and I'll tell you why later on. So the uh, the scenic section is one double double box kind of thing. Um, and if I cut back to when I unpacked this just now, you can see how I braced and closed the boxes. So I'll cut back to that now and then we'll come back to this. So here are the boxes closed up. So you've got, this is the fiddle, fiddle yard box. And then you've got the two main boxes there. So what you can see is I've braced them with plywood. I don't want to lift this one up because I've got the, uh, the good shed in there. I'll try and keep them fairly flat. But you can see under there, it's just to keep the the fiddle yard up to the same height just bits of plywood and the reason I've braced these I've braced it along here and I've braced it underneath just by using this thin plywood and some glue is because when I remove these straps and these are cable ties these are velcro cable ties I've just attached together to keep the boxes together because they don't have the clips anymore um, but yes, because I've removed the, uh, you know, these are now just unattached and they fold down. I've lost a lot of the structural integrity of the boxes. So that's why they're both braced and I use these straps. So they are braced together so I don't have to have a join because um, a, the join, you can see I've left these rails here. These These little bits of track do come out, but... I sit this one on top of these and I would do if I was transporting it so uh, kind of protects the rail sticking out just a little bit there I can put a fiddle stick extension there so that is how I transport the boxes you can see wiring is still very much at the early stages that's got to be tidied up that will obviously be a plug-in thing so I'll be able to completely take the fiddle box away at the moment it's attached just because I'm too lazy to disconnect the uh, the chocolate block there. But obviously the electrics will be something that's going to be tidied up in due course. Anyway, back to the layout and a bit more talk about, about that.
Now, one of the things I've learned about a box file layout is that many people who build them um, are excellent modelers, very, very realistic. I mean, this still needs prettying. This still obviously needs a lot of work doing to it, yeah. But a lot of people treat them a little bit as moving dioramas. I wanted something more than a moving diorama. I wanted something with operational interest. So this is why we have such a track layout. Um, Basically, the story goes, this is serving a bakery called Karen Leshk. And if I talk you through the little plan here, so we've got the station platform here, will be. The middle line where the train is right now is goods in. Um, there is a hole at the end of this mock-up. So we can put a little extension there and push wagons through the door eventually when it arrives. Um, and then the third siding there is goods out. So there's going to be a little platform there. And that's where the, once the wagons, once the boxes have been unloaded, then they get shunted to the goods out to be loaded up with uh, boxes of biscuits and cakes to go off throughout Scotland. And then we have a little spur off there into the only building on the layout at the moment, uh, the little engine shed. And then if we come down, you can see there's a crossover here. Coming in at the min in the middle, this is the, the main line. And this is actually the beginnings of a loop. So off stage, this connects up with the main line and basically trains can run around. So uh, the way we do that is with a traverser. So I've got a traverser here. If I just move this train out of the way, is it going the right direction? No, of course it isn't. I'll just move this train out of the way and show you the traverser. And this is one of the mistakes I've made. So you can see I've used three millimeter foam board to lay the track on. Excuse all the wires, this is very messy. And the idea being this traverser is just a piece of foam board that is nestled between two other bits of foam board. And the reason it's not the whole piece is because I wanted room here for the coach. I'll just bring it into view. So you can see here the locomotive still got room to run around the coach. So that is why the traverse is not in the middle, so it's to allow us to be able to run around a coach. However, as you can probably tell, this is not very satisfactory at all, because one of the things that I really want to get from this layout, folks, is smooth running. And this, this has been a real challenge. And what's happening here with the traverser is that it has been warping. We're losing um, its ability to stay in place. And then, as I say, so basically the plan is, well, I'll show you later, you know, the locomotive runs onto there. You pull it down and then it runs back that way. But it's just not satisfactory. So um that is going to have to go the plan here is to turn this into a third scenic section uh, get rid of the traverser just put a normal piece of foam board down and then just run this as a loop into here and then just have a fiddle stick running off the end so that didn't work as i say what i'm really after is operational running uh, operational reliability and I'll be honest with you folks, if I'd have known that when I was building this, we'll just get this out of the way again. I'll be honest with you, a box file, here we go, look, that, that coach is just derailed on the traverser. It's not, it's not satisfactory at all. So yeah, if you're after operational reliability, folks, a box file isn't really the uh, the layout you should be going for 
because another issue I've had is this connection between the boxes. Now I'm using a piece of track at the moment and fish plates just to, uh, to, to bridge the gap if you like. Um, but because it's uneven, uh, sometimes the wheels leave the track and the, the locomotive stall. And then another thing is that because this isn't as flat or as firm as a baseboard, these points are, well, they just cause sometimes, some of the Hornby Railroad 040s causes them to stall because they fall down the, uh, the gaps here and, you know, they're just not great. So, yeah, if I was doing this again, I would build a baseboard, you know, like a scale model scenery baseboard in a box, and I would use electrofrog points. However, we're too far gone with this one. So what I have done to compensate, now there are two ways I'm getting around this. First of all is what we're seeing here, which is I'm using these two old mainline J72s and a homemade controller. So what I've decided to do is I'm trying to use this as a layout to show you that you don't need to spend a lot of money to get operational reliability and operational interest. As I say, you know, this is part one, it's got to be printed up yet. But um, the reason we've gone for these mainline J72s is because they are so, so smooth with this homemade controller. So let's have a, put this, if I sit the camera down, um, and if I just move it down a bit, um, yeah, there we go. Whoops, a daisy. So you can see it just goes faultlessly over the points. So the controller I'm using with this, uh, I haven't got a casing on it yet, but I'll just quickly show you. <laughs> Don't laugh, is this next to the IPA. So I'm actually gonna mount that. I have got a casing, but I'm actually gonna put it in a margarine tub because it's gonna be in the, the spirit of the build of this, this layout, which is operational interest on a budget. Um, as I say, so, sort of along the lines of something like budget, budget model railways do, but with more of an emphasis on operational interest and op operational reliability. So I think that's enough waffle folks for now. Um, as I say, this is the first of hopefully many updates. If you aren't comfortable in making your own controller, um, I got the diagram from this from Jim Reed. Uh, Jim is an absolute gentleman and a scholar. He builds the O-Gage Micros out of cardboard. I'll leave a link to Jim Reed's website in the description below this video so you can see more about building your, your own homemade controller. But if you're not up to that, then you could also use a Gage Master, like this one, and um, which is about 35 quid and some Hornby Railroad 040s. And what I'm gonna do with those is I'm going to build little tenders for them with pickups so that they don't stall on these points. They don't always stall on these points, but they're not as good as these mainline split chassis locos uh, with the homemade controller. Now then, to prove that you don't need to spend a fortune, um, this, now, as you all know, prices have gone mad on eBay uh, recently since lockdown on the price of secondhand model railways. This I got for 30 pounds, which is quite a lot for what it is, but I like it. Um, and I don't know if you can see, but I've actually put little extra pickups in because the back wheels weren't kind of connecting to the chassis. So I've put little little extra connectors in there. So, th 
this locomotive was. £30 and then the coaching stock, which is the good old Dapol kit. Um, I sure think I got this one ready made from Rails of Sheffield. They were having a sale on and I got this for £10, but you can get it in a kit as well. And um, the kit I think you can get for about £10 as well or under. So um, that is really good. So I'll, get, I'll shunt this one out of the way and show you the other train I've got. I've not derailed this time, that's good. So we have another J27. Now this one, folks, I got back in 2018 from the little charity model shop at Berry Station on the East Lancashire Railway. And this cost me the grand total of £15. I got two, or these three wagons were, I think, £2.50 each. And these are the Hornby. I think this was something like Bird's Eye and this was KP snacks or something they didn't have roofs or anything so i've put roofs on in plastic card i've painted them up and i've painted up the uh, the, the little brake van there so all in all this little train cost me 22 pound 50. so i've got two trains here i've got a goods train and i've got a passenger train and they've come to what about 60 yeah just over 60 quid for two trains which i am over the moon about absolutely over the moon uh, this engine shed is elcut creative and i've had a lot of fun building this up um, it's three panels long as you can see the one you get in the the, the bundle is four panels long but i've made it shorter because uh, it still fits a, a j72 and then you can see the plan here is uh, we're going to have the station there uh, and then I don't know quite what to do here yet. Um, I'm probably going to use Elcut Creative panels and uh, build the little platform and just build the factory along here. And like I say, I've now decided I'm going to make this box scenic. I don't know how I'm going to do the back of it yet, but um, that's where we are at the moment. So enough waffle. Um, I think it's about time we had a bit of a running session, don't you? So we start the day with J72 68745, which is bringing an empty coaching stock from the nearby town of uh, Tewa Anahar, which is going to make the early departure for the, the workers leaving the night shift. Shunts the coach back into the loop, ready to run around. And then we have J72 69001 arriving with the early morning dry goods. So once the goods train has arrived, the passenger can leave. Right, with the station siding, siding vacated, 69001 can now run around its wagons.
back on scene. Traverser, which is why the Traverser has got to go. So this is where it would shunt the uh, the vans through the goods indoor into the factory siding but that doesn't exist yet so we will just uncouple the goods van, uh, the guards van there uh, well we will do but we've got to wait for the passenger train to arrive first before we can carry on shunting Right, so that now means that 69001 can go and get some coal and water. And in the meantime, six eight seven four five runs around its train. Right, and that's now 68745, ready to take the passenger train away. And that leaves the path clear now for 69001 to go and collect the unloaded box vans and take them to the goods outsiding ready for loading with cakes and biscuits. Now you may notice that the front coupling on 69001 has been blue tacked into the up position. And the reason for that is because the mainline coupling doesn't really agree well with the old fashioned Hornby Triang couplings. And when you're shunting, if that hook is engaged, 
it can sometimes cause derailments. Whereas if you leave it up out the way with a bit of blue tack and just rely on the hook from the Hornby Triang wagons, then you don't get derailments. And of course we have to shunt the brake van now into the available siding because obviously there's a passenger train on the way. So we're now ready for 69001 to assemble his train, ready to take to Toa Anahar, a nearby town, for the pickup goods that's coming through in a short while. Right, so I think we'll leave it there, but hopefully now you can see what what operational interest you can get out of um, old locomotives like this and just a tiny little box file layout such as this. A huge thank you to the channel Double O Bill because it was thanks to him um, I learned how to service and improve the running of these old locomotives. So I'll leave a link to Double O Bill's channel in the description below this video. But in the meantime, folks, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, as, unfortunately, the next update won't be until probably October 2021, because I've got a lot of work to get through. I've got to leave home and uh, travel for a bit. So, um, 
really this this little video was for my pleasure as much as anybody else's just so I can remember this little layout because it has given me so much pleasure it really has I absolutely love it and I'm looking forward to developing it a bit further showing you what you can do uh, with a with a such old you know 70 pounds worth of stock and uh, a couple of box files so anyway thanks very much folks uh, if you enjoyed this please do um, subscribe and give us a thumbs up cheers now see you next time bye bye